Here with a new episode of Chord Play, and this is the Chords of Primus. And before I say or do anything else in this episode, I have something very important I need to say. Primus sucks. Alright, so before I confuse anybody or upset anyone or somebody dives in the comment section to leave a nasty message, if you're confused about what I just said, then you're missing the inside joke that is Primus. And, you know, in the early years, Primus formed in California in 1984. And during those early years, Les Claypool noticed people in the crowd were shouting, You suck, or Primus sucks. And he took what they said and turned it into the band's motto. So to a Primus fan, when you say Primus sucks, you're actually saying Primus rocks, but it's disguised, you know, as a diss. And these guys are essential, avant-garde, experimental, progressive, funk rock, or funk metal, you know, legends. And they've released nine studio albums, five EPs, a couple live albums. And if you're not familiar with their sound... Imagine Funkadelic Rush and the police jamming with Metallica and Frank Zappa is overseeing the entire thing. And that's kind of putting you in the neighborhood, or at least the ballpark, of Primus's legacy and sound. In the guitar department, we have Larry Lalonde, or Lair. And Larry's a legend of the guitar, for sure. He studied with Joe Satriani. Actually recorded early albums with the band Possessed, you know, the pioneering death metal band. Also Blind Illusion, a group, a short-lived you know, group that he actually met Les Claypool when they recorded an album with Blind Illusion. And then eventually they turned into Primus. And Larry's guitar style is very unusual. Very atonal and dissonant, full of, you know, strange textures and weird tonalities and stuff. But I love it because he doesn't sound like anybody else. You know, he'll play a solo... And his guitar sounds like it's in pain or it's hurting. You know, it doesn't sound normal at all. It's like this kind of twisted demonic blues or something mixed in with funk and experimental rock and stuff like that. Very interesting guitarist and very unusual. You know, it's kind of an acquired taste, but I love Larry's playing. So definitely Larry's work with Primus on its own is very notable and very respected. But then when you really look at what he's done, you know, he literally helped create death metal, like I mentioned earlier. He appears on three Possessed albums, also the Blind Illusion album when he met Les Claypool. There's one album there. And then he and Les also worked with Tom Waits on a trio of albums. So Larry's, you know, music kind of ex you know, extends beyond Primus. And it's really interesting to hear him work with other artists and other situations and not necessarily just the crazy cartoon world that is Primus. I like to hear him play weird, but then I like to hear him kind of play normal, too. Great guitarist. So the chord bass and rhythm guitar examples in this episode came from three Primus albums, and like I just mentioned earlier, they've released nine studio albums, and Larry is distinctly, you know, in the mix everywhere. But there's something about his playing style. You know, we're going to get into... You know, dissonance and twisted chords and unusual, you know, tonalities and stuff like that. Lots of these haunted and mysterious sounds. And we've had, you know, a lot of episodes of chord play where I uncovered some of those sounds. You know, haunted chords episodes and dreamy chords and some of that stuff. And definitely, it's something you can kind of pick up. You might need to use a Q-tip and clean out your ears after this episode. Because there's some unsettled, you know, unsettling tonalities and sounds. But it's eye-opening. It's also very inspiring. Because music would be boring without the tension and release that you hear in classical jazz, rock, and metal, and all sorts of styles. And Larry thrives in that world of tension and release. So here we go. The opening, that's the song John the Fisherman from the album Fizzle Fry, and it's something like this. <laughs> It 
starts with this grinding riff. You're gonna do this six times, and it's B, C to C sharp, six times in a row, like this. <laughs> time you're gonna do B to C and then D to C sharp and then you hear this next riff which is really unusual so it's basically a C sharp major triad right there but it's separated you know it's split apart like this right? and I've also seen this transcribed here where he's doing kind of grab that other partial C-sharp major, you know, part of the triad right there. But I like doing it there instead, because it's kind of right beside the other one. And it doesn't really sound that much different. Right? Same notes, just a different way of playing it. And you can still do all those slides and stuff. And then right there, after he does the kind of back and forth, There, way up to the uh, what 19th and 18th fret, and it kind of adds you know some vibrato right there, too. It's like a D and an F way up there. And the last time, right there, just do that last little tag that B, C, D to C sharp, and then it kind of goes into the verse right there. Very unusual song, but I love John the Fisherman. That's a great one. So I've approached this episode a little bit differently because now we're going to find dissonance and finding you know, these dissonant sounds that Larry likes to use. And we are going to get back to some Primus you know, songs and examples, but I wanted to supply you with this, which is going to kind of give you a little bit of information and at least kind of uncover you know, some of the things that Larry you know, commonly reaches for and plays on the guitar. So I'm going to target three you know, dissonant intervals, and there are several others that are dissonant. But these three seem to pop up a lot in Larry's music. And that's the major seventh, the minor second, and the diminished fifth. And, you know, basically in the key of E, the major seven would be D sharp, you know, and E. Right? D and E right there. Super, you know, tense right there. And then also the minor second, or flat nine, also known as a flat two, that's going to be that F note right there, so the opposite of the major seven. Right, just a half step away from the root. D sharp to E, and F to E. And then the flat five, you know, just the fifth in the key of E is B, so your flat five is going to be B flat right there, and you could do it right here. And you can hear those intense, you know, dissonant sounds right there. them again. You know, there's E, D sharp, and E, so there's your major seven. There's your F, so there's your you know minor second or flat nine. And there's your B flat, the flat five. Right. And you can do it again way up here. There's your E, D sharp, and E, so there's your major seven. There's F to E, there's your flat nine. And there's your flat five, that B flat. And you could think outside the box, you could arrange that like a riff, and you could do. Uh... And Larry might do that, you know, instead of doing what we just did find some way to ring it out like that and make it, you know, mysterious and creepy. You know, the same notes, just played in a different way. So Larry definitely loves these flat five sounds. You know, think of a regular power chord, but then we're lowering the fifth. You know, so there, right here, there's a cluster. And you could actually think of that as B flat, flat five. You know, um... Um, there's your first one, flat five, root, flat five. Then do it again right there. There's your root, flat five, root. Again, right there, there's your flat five, root, flat five. 
and then once again there's your root flat five root and i definitely would spend some time learning those four shapes here 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 and here for a song example using some of these tonalities and textures check out the song fish on from sailing the seas of cheese and you'll hear this chords. So that first one, that's actually A diminished right there. So we've got A, A, C, and E flat right there. So that's A diminished. You know, flat three, flat five. And then he introduces the open high E string, and that's the fifth in the key of A or A minor. So that's going to change that to an A minor sharp 11 if you play all those strings right there. these kind of dissonant textures and sounds check out the song American Life during the chorus and you'll hear Larry playing around like this right very tense right there so that first one that's basically a G uh, add sharp 11 right there or just a G sharp 11 switching to this you could think of that as like a B flat flat five right, like that very tense sounds right there and you'll definitely find Larry playing with that flat, flat five all the time he specializes in those bizarre weird flat five sounds Next up's a fill from Winona's Big Brown Beaver, and this came from the album Tales from the Punch Bowl, and I love this song. The music video is classic, too. That's a great video. But it's just a fill, and you, he ends on a flat five chord, like this. One more time. So it distinctly has this kind of carnival music sound as far as that first part, and he's just moving down chromatically from G to C sharp right there. And then he distinctly plays a D flat 5 right here. Really interesting guitar work in that song too, but check out that little short and sweet fill that ends with a flat 5 chord. So it's not all about flat five power chords with Larry. Sometimes he definitely kind of reverts back to just regular power chords. And this is from Too Many Puppies from the album Fizzle Fry. And this definitely reveals some of that early metal influence in Larry's playing. Because it's just straight power chords, but you're moshing like this. <laughs> C, C, or I'm sorry, C, C sharp to D right there. And then you're doing this mosh kind of heavy palm muted, you know, F sharp G, F sharp, G sharp to A. Like that. about puppies but it should be about shark attacks because that sounds like jaws or something it's just you know very aggressive and in your face all right next up is the song groundhog's day and this came from the album fizzle fry and this is definitely a fan favorite song and it reveals kind of a different approach you know for larry in this guitar part and i love the fact that the first part's this melodic you know single note line but it's really just stacked c7 chords and then there's this weird twisted thing happening during the verse too but groundhog's day is something like this <laughs> So 
it starts with this. When the guitar eventually comes in with that. And there is kind of like, you know, like an extended intro and stuff before this. But when Larry comes in with that part, he's doing that. So really it's C7 here, kind of, and C7 there. The way he's kind of spelled that out. So it's almost like two C7 chords, but separated, you know, one note at a time, or single notes. And then this little... you know, D up and down, kind of just drifting around. And that C to D there. And then you hear this. And it's like they're in the verse right there. And that first chord, that's a C11. Kind of a big stretch there. And then bring that uh, F note back to E. Like that. And that's just C7. So a C11... C7. But if you look really carefully, if you remove that root note, there's an E flat 5 hiding right there. You know, we were looking at that earlier, but with the C root note, that's actually now C7 hiding. So Larry does that a lot, where he's still kind of targeting and hitting flat 5 chords, but they're camouflaged, because you don't really see that in a C. But when you remove that root note, then you see the flat 5 chord right there. Last but not least is Southbound Pachyderm, and this came from Tales from the Punch Bowl. And this is definitely one of my favorite Primus songs. And Les is doing this melodic bass intro, but you'll notice a lot of what Les is playing during that first part is just a pedaling open A string, and it's building this tension and, and excitement. But uh, eventually, you hear this. So I'm going to loop this with TC Electronic, did a looper, and here's Les's, you know, kind of just droning bass part. And he's doing some other stuff in there, but I just want to kind of supply this in the background like this. Open A. And then eventually you hear Larry doing this. So basically, that open A from the bass is kind of dictating everything as far as the tonality. But just think of these kind of cat scratch fever chords there in the beginning. You know, an A5 and then moving up kind of like that A, you know, minor 7 implied. And then you hear this. And I think the first time he just slides that back. Adam Jones kind of bend. And that kind of tension in there. And then do that same A move again. And then. And that's really tasty. I love stuff like that. So over A, you can think of that a couple different ways. Like an A9 sharp 11, because there's your B note. And there's your sharp 11, uh, that uh, D sharp. like D5, and this little melodic, E to G, and then E to A, and then you distinctly hear that sharp 11 again, that D sharp, the bass and guitar play it, and then this frantic, you know, D, D sharp to E, and the bass and guitar both do that too. So one more time all the way through, great song too. too with the claymation and the elephant or whatever so cool all right that's going to wrap this episode with the chords of primus and definitely i've had some requests to feature some of larry's music and the music of primus and it's kind of an acquired taste it's maybe not for everybody i bet pop music fans out there don't like primus because it's weird and different and avant-garde and experimental and 
I'm not really a big pop music fan, so I love experimental avant-garde stuff. Buckethead and Funkadelic and some of this stuff. I love Frank Zappa. And then when I first started to hear Primus, it was so different than everything else on the scene. They hit like in the late 80s, early 90s. And compared to a lot of the hard rock and metal and stuff on the scene, they were strikingly different. Like, what in the world is that? But then over the years, their music started to kind of filter in. And I started to really enjoy these unusual sounds. They don't sound like anybody else. Larry doesn't play guitar like anybody else. And that's refreshing. Because I'm kind of sick of hearing the same, you know, guitarists play the same licks that sound exactly like somebody else. Or the band that sounds exactly like another band. But with Primus, it's unique, it's different, it's individual, artistic, creative, and everything. But I love it because it's so different. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.